This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we are talking about the fastest weapons in Elden Ring. Let's get to it. So the other day I put out a video talking about the best, hardest hitting, dexterity scaling weapons to use in your dexterity build. I got a ton of backlash in the comments because some of those weapons were relatively slow and people were saying that they wanted speed, that dexterity was about speed, that's what it is. So you're getting this video about the fastest weapons. And we're gonna have a talk about that and about how that relates to dexterity here in a minute. But first, let's talk about the fastest weapons in the game. So your absolute fastest weapons in the game are daggers. They're insanely fast. They can hit a whole extra time in the time that it takes your katanas to hit five times, they can hit six. So there, nothing beats them and they're not the same as claws. Funny enough, claws are about the same attack speed as your thrusting swords. We'll get to that in a second. So that's your fastest by far. Now all of these other weapons can be grouped together as your next fastest weapons, but I'm going to put them in order because there is a slight difference in between each of them. And I mean frames difference in between each of them. So after daggers, your next fastest weapon is thrusting swords, the smaller thrusting swords, not the larger ones, and claws, followed by curved swords, then katanas, and then last but not least, we have twin swords or twin blades and short swords, which are pretty much the exact same. Now, here's the difference in each of those and why I say that they're all, all of those fall in the same group basically after daggers. If we use katanas as our baseline for this group, Thrusting swords and claws are about nine frames faster. Curved swords are seven frames faster and twin blades and short swords are four frames slower. So I record at 30 frames a second and all of my videos are at 30 frames a second. So the biggest difference that we have there is the thrusting swords and the claws being about nine frames faster than the katanas making them almost a half second faster, but not quite. They would have to be 15 frames faster in order to be a full half second. So the difference in all of those speeds there is negligible, completely negligible, because you need to understand that judging stuff by frame data is not an exact science. It's close to an exact science, but there can be some variation in there. So for example, our thrusting swords, I say they are nine frames faster, but they could be eight, they could be seven, they could be 10. The only way to know 100% for sure would be to rip the actual full animations from the files of the game and see how long they actually are. That is why I am saying all of those classes of weapons can essentially be grouped together into the second fastest weapons in the game. Now what's interesting is that a lot of people were swearing by the whips that they were fast and whips are actually rather slow. If you take a look at this footage here, you can see that the whip manages to attack three times in the time that it takes the katana to attack five. So if you are a dexterity player, and by dexterity player, I mean a player who is after fast weapons, then whips should not be your go-to. Not only do they hit like a wet noodle, they are also significantly slower than katanas. And the large curved swords, so things like Bloodhound's Fang, something that many, many, many people swear is a good dexterity weapon, and it is, it hits really hard, it's just not fast. It's much slower than katanas. Just like the whip, it's only able to deal three hits in the time that it takes katanas to do five. Okay, so we know that daggers are your fastest and claws fall in with everything else, but from here on out, we are going to just ignore daggers and claws because most people don't care about them. They are an acquired taste because you basically have to be all up inside whatever you're fighting and most people don't want that. So I want to talk about all of the fastest weapons in the game. Katanas, curved swords, thrusting swords, twin blades, and short swords. And how they are apparently considered dexterity weapons. And by dexterity, apparently people mean fast and not the actual character attribute, dexterity. The dexterity attribute itself is not really that great unless you're playing a caster, because in that case, it's going to increase your casting speed. Dexterity does not increase your attack speed. The only thing that affects your attack speed 
is the weapon that you're using. The other things that dexterity does, the attribute itself, is make it harder to knock you off your horse, and you take less fall damage when you fall, and you fall at a height that isn't going to kill you. So unless you are playing a caster and you want that increased cast speed, you shouldn't really care about dexterity and should only have enough to equip the weapon that you want to use. And that is because the strength attribute actually helps you by increasing your defenses. Now, does it increase your defenses a ton and equate to a lot of damage negation? Eh, not really. In the test that I did, I managed a 22 damage difference having maxed out dexterity and getting shot by an arrow and then having maxed out strength and not having any dexterity and getting shot by the same arrow. The difference was 22 damage, but 22 damage could save your life in a boss fight. But I digress. The funny thing is that I'm trying to get to here is that all of those weapons that I mentioned scale pretty dang well, if not better, in strength than they do with the dexterity attribute. So I use the Uchi Katana, the Lord Sworn's Straight Sword, the Bandit's Curved Sword, the Clean Rot Knight's Sword, and the Twinned Knight Sword. I tested each of those weapons with a max dexterity setup and a max strength setup to get their average damage values. Now here's the fun part. So the average damage for the Uchi Katana was 22 damage higher in favor of dexterity. For the straight sword, it was 2.6 damage in favor of dexterity. For the bandit's curved sword, 24.6 damage in favor of dexterity. For the clean rot knight's sword, or so our pokey pokey sword, it was 55 damage in favor of strength. And for the twinned knight swords, it was 62 damage in favor of strength. So those thrusting swords, which remember are at the top of our list being a whole nine frames faster than the katanas, actually does better if you use it with a strength build. Now do keep in mind that when I was testing all of these weapons with dexterity, I had them specced to the keen affinity, and when I was testing them with strength, I had them specced to the heavy affinity. Now your straight swords are also a good option for strength, and that 2.6 damage difference is completely negligible. For all intents and purposes, you could say the average damage for those is the same whether you are strength or dexterity. And once again, why would you pick dexterity if you are not a caster or are just running around on your horse all the time, but you can't fight bosses on horses, so who really cares whether you can get knocked off your horse easily or not? That little bit of bonus defense that you get from having increased strength would serve you much better. Yes, I know there are some open world bosses which you can fight on your horse, but for a majority of the bosses, you are locked into a cell in which you cannot ride your horse and fight them on horseback. Now for our curved sword of choice and our katana of choice, those could be different depending on which specific curved sword or katana you use. Now, most of the katanas are probably going to be about the same, but there are some curved swords that could have better strength scaling. But when it comes to katanas, you need to weigh whether or not you want 22 additional damage or to take 22 additional less damage. Now, of course, those numbers are going to vary, but in general, which would you rather have? That 22 damage that you're going to miss out on by going strength build with these could easily be offset by the fact that they have blood build up on them and deal massive amounts of damage with bleed. Now I know some of you are going to jump down there in the comments and be like, yes, but there are weapons that you can't change the Ash of War on and they scale better with dexterity than they do strength. This is true. And if you want to use one of those weapons, then you don't really have a choice. You need to use dexterity in order to hit hard with them. For example, Hand of Melania. But Hand of Melania is just as fast as Uchi Katana. So you could just use Uchi Katana instead because their attack power difference is completely negligible and it does about the same amount of damage that Hand of Melania does. And you don't need that 48 dex requirement just to equip Uchi Katana. And you can also get it super early in the game. At 99 dexterity, Uchi Katana comes in at 602 
attack power, and hand of Melania comes in at 607. So in the end, that's all going to come down to personal preference. Which, let's be honest, most things in this game come down to skill and personal preference. I've seen people beat this game at level 1 with a club. I've also seen people beat this game with their butt. Yeah, you heard that right. Their butt. That's completely doable. So... Really, it all comes down to what you feel most comfortable playing and what you enjoy playing. The reason I make these videos is to give you insight on the game so that maybe if you are not enjoying your current build, you can be informed in a way that allows you to swap up your build to a style that you might enjoy a little more. So that's pretty much it for this one. Those are your fastest weapons and it really doesn't matter whether you are dexterity or strength. They should work either way and they should work relatively well and be the same speed. If you enjoyed this video and you found it informative and helpful, consider hitting the subscribe button and and the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out other informative videos. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Elite Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.